ששמach, תעפה מלכוסך. נחווה שוויאנה כקנא דשמיע אפרעה. האולן לחמס ומקנן יאומנה. וואש ווק לאן האו בן אי קנא דאפ. חנן, שוואקן לחייווין. לא תלניסיונה, אלא פסל מנבישה. מפול ולחי מלכותא, חיילה תשבוכתא לעלם עלמין. אמן. the way it fell from his lips 2,000 years ago, almost 2,000 years ago. I'm going to say this prayer now in its entirety in the Aramaic tongue. Shall we pray? Aun d'washmeya nitkadesh eshmach t'ethe malkuthach נחווה שוויאנה כקנא דשמיה אפרעה האולן לחמה סומקנן יאומנה וואש ווק לאן האו בין אי קנא דאפ חנן שוואקן לחייווין לא תלניסיונה אלא פסד מנבישה מתול דילחי מלכותא חיילה תשפוכתא Amen. And very soon you will be able to say it exactly the way I said it. We're learning it a phrase at a time. As a brief review, we did our Father who is everywhere. And remember the term Father means beloved. And all through the prayer, We must keep this in mind that we are praying not just thinking of a deity. We're praying to a parental presence, the beloved, all through the prayer, whether we're talking about the kingdom or God providing bread for us, which is the phrase that we, what we are continuing with today. This next phrase, and I'm going to go over it again so you'll remember how to say it. It's Haolan Lachma Sunkanan Yaumana. Give us bread. And remember, the term bread doesn't not only mean just food or the bread itself, but it also means anything material that you may need. And one other thing that I did not tell in the last session, and that is that the word bread also means truth. understanding. You provide us truth, our needful truth, our needful understanding from day to day. That is another deeper meaning to this prayer. So it encompasses not only the physical needs of a human being, it encompasses the spiritual inner needs of a human being, our spirits, our souls, which thirst for a true understanding of life, love, and peace. So this is the prayer again. Haolan Lachma Sunkanan Yamana. And this is the meaning of this prayer. And we always close with an attunement from my book, Setting a Trap for God. And again, as a brief review, the word to pray in Aramaic means to trap, to capture. to make it a part of your life. And we're going now to this next attunement for the bread, the fifth attunement. This is called the fifth attunement. And what I wrote was this. 
our Father has given us the intelligence and understanding to discover new and hidden resources for the betterment of humanity. All that any human being needs has already been provided for him or her. It is spiritual guidance within us that brings about all things properly, with good to all and harm to none. With this kind of realization, we can know that all is well. Let us tune in to the source of all good, which is Abba, the Beloved, and our supply will not fail us. This is the fifth attunement, which completes it. And now we are ready for our next phrase. The next phrase is very important in this prayer. In fact, it's one of the most challenging phrases that we meet when we say this prayer, especially when it's saying. Let's look at it first in the Aramaic language. All right, I put it, it's a long phrase, so I'm going to have to use two boards to express it. So it's wash, walk, lan, ao, bain, a, kana, dap, anan, shwakan, lahayawain. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Wash, walk, lan, ao, Bain a kana dap hanan shwakan lahayawain. And what does this mean in English? And forgive us, as we say in English. We say our debts, but it really means our offenses, our debts. It was used as a metaphor. How bain. A kana, even as we have forgiven our offenders or debtors. Okay, now let's go over these words so you can say the prayer in Aramaic. I'm going to go one word at a time, very slowly, so you can get it. Always wash. Remember this word, this letter A is not an open A, it's not wash. It's wash, 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 woke, W-O-K, wash, woke, woke, lan. Forgive us, this is the word for us, wash, woke, lan, wash, woke, lan. How Bain. How bain. One more time. You can repeat it after me. How bain. So the phrase together when we say it, wash, woke, lan, how bain. Wash, woke, lan, how bain. And we've done this word before. A kana. A ka. Na, two open ahs and the A-E sound here. A kana, A kana. Then we come here, and this is dap hanan. A kana dap hanan, even as we have shwakan. Now this Q sound here. It's like a K, but it's in the throat. This is why we make it a Q. So it's schwak in in the glottal. It's a glottal stop. Schwak schwakan lahaya wain. Again, dap hanan schwakan lahaya wain. Shwakan la hai ya wain. It's like a man's name, Wayne. L, and this L is just l, l, very short. L hai ya wain. 
Shwakan Lahaya Wain. So what does this mean again in English? And forgive us our debts, even as we have forgiven our debtors or offenders. Now, we're going to look at this word for word. All right, and forgive us. The word to forgive, the verb to forgive in Aramaic is the word shwak. Interesting word, shwak. And we just say to forgive, but it, it has many meanings in Aramaic. It means to f not only to forgive, but it means to untie, to release, to set free. So when you're forgiving, you're setting free, you're releasing, you're untying. That's what's so interesting about this. When we think of forgiveness, when you forgive somebody, or if they've done you something wrong to you, and you're forgiving them, what you're literally doing, though, is when you're forgiving them, you are untying yourself from them, from the mistake or hurt that they did you. Sometimes when you want to do forgiveness, the person doesn't want your forgiveness. They don't care whether you forgive them. They feel justified in what they have done. But you still have to untie yourself from carrying that burden. So forgiveness releases you, unties you from the person that has done something wrong to you. And, of course, in this prayer is, and forgive us, forgive us, that is, untie me from my debts. Literally, this word also, forgive, means to cancel. And I don't think there's anything more precious in this world than to have all our debts canceled, don't you think? <laughs> no matter what you owe. So when we, we, when we say to forgive, you are canceling. You are canceling out just finishing with it, and cancel our debts is a very literal way to translate this prayer instead of the word forgive and cancel our debts even as we have canceled our debtors. And remember, it's based on how I forgive is how I find forgiveness. When it's difficult to forgive, it's uh, hard then to forgive yourself because you're hard on others. But, you know, I find that most of the time people have a greater difficulty in forgiving themselves than they do even other people. And we don't go with the laws of God. I love the way the laws of God work in the human body. The laws of God in the human body for healing, for making amends, for correcting things that are wrong in the body. If, say for instance, this is an example I've used all the time in my talks. Say, for instance, you cut your finger. Your body doesn't say to you, did you do it deliberately or did you do it accidentally? If you did it deliberately, forget it. I'm not going to heal it. The body doesn't work that way. If, if there's a cut, you make a cut, it only knows one thing, to go in for healing. This is how the laws of God work. The laws of God always work for healing, for bringing together, for making whole. The word to heal in Aramaic means to make whole. Haile comes from the word haile, to make whole. It's the power to make whole. So, in, when we say, when we work with the body, the body works with the laws of God. It's not judgmental. When something goes wrong, it is not judgmental. It's working to heal. The body is all the time working to heal what has gone wrong. This is what true forgiveness is. True forgiveness is working with the laws of God. It doesn't ask whether it was done deliberately or accidentally. You know, if it was done accidentally, we can forgive it. But the way the human body works is if I deliberately did it, the body still works to heal what is wrong. So it is with this expression in this prayer. Shwakin lahaya wain. I love the word 
schwach. It has an interesting sound. When you forgive someone, when you cancel the debt, when you set someone free, you're really schwach. You schwach them. You free them. You set them free. You release them. It's wonderful in the Aramaic language. But it's even as we have forgiven our offenders. The, the way I have forgiven other people, if the more I forgive, the more I find forgiveness for myself. The more I forgive others, the deeper my forgiveness goes for myself. The, the longer I go, the better it is for this forgiveness. So let's do this. It's a long expression, hard to remember. So I'm going to go over this prayer, this phrase of the prayer, one more time. Wash, walk, lan, how, bain, e, kana, dap, hanan, shwakan, la, hayawain. I'll hold them up again. Because it's a long one and hard to remember. Wash, walk, lan, how, bain, e, kana, this is the prayer forgiveness. And this is one of the main teachings of Jesus. People often ask me, can I, in a, in a nutshell, take all the teachings of Jesus and put them in a few words? Yes. I can give you two or three or four words that Jesus constantly emphasized and it shows up in his prayer. And I tell you, if you should ever lose the New Testament or the New Testament ever taken away from you or the Gospels removed from you, if you remember this prayer, this prayer is a synopsis, a, a condensing of everything that Jesus taught. And in it, he taught the coming of the kingdom. He taught having faith in God to provide bread for us from day to day, whether it's a spiritual need or a physical need, emotional need or mental need. And the same thing with forgiveness now. Forgiveness is one of the main teachings of Jesus. Peter asked Jesus how many times he should forgive. And he even suggested to Jesus seven times 70. And then Jesus gave him a number that was even beyond seven times 70, which in Aramaic, when you do that, it simply means you continually forgive. There is no way you can set a border on forgiveness. Forgiveness is indefinite. You just keep going and going and going and going. It's the only way because people make mistakes. We make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. And forgiveness is necessary when you're living with other people. As I often tell people, if you weren't here in this world, everything would be all right because I would be all alone and there'd be no other people in this world. But since we share a life together, nations share together, people share together, we have to practice forgiveness because we're going to make mistakes, we're going to hurt, we're going to do all these kind of things which happen to us. And so forgiveness is a necessary teaching of Jesus. Meekness is another teaching of Jesus. The word mekihi or mekihe, blessed are the meek. The meek are those who are able to bend. And to forgive, you have to be able to bend. He said, blessed are the meek, the mekihe, for they will inherit the land, which means property. Why? Because the meek live long enough to inherit. The word earth is not a good translation. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The word earth there, ar'a, really means land, property. Because landowners love to give to meek people the land to work it, to till it, to bring and make it produce because the meek people mind their own business and they practice forgiveness. Forgiveness is one of the main teachings of Jesus. And meekness, loving kindness, love, meekness, and forgiveness, all three go together. 
I know the Apostle Paul brought out faith and hope and love, but Jesus didn't. Jesus brought out love and forgiveness and meekness. So when you love, you practice forgiveness. When you practice forgiveness, you bend, you let, you set free. You know what survives the trees that survive a storm? The trees that survive a storm are the trees that bend, that are pliable. They have the sap in them. The sap makes it, makes them very pliable. You ever try to get a new branch coming on a tree and try to break it? It's hard to break it. You can bend it, bend it, and it'll go right back up because it has so much sap, so much life in it, so much movement in it. And forgiveness and meekness and love is the sap that we need in our minds and hearts. I often say to people, we suffer from arthritis of the minds. <laughs> our thoughts get caught in a negative thought gets caught and it's like a spur. It gets caught in there and it gets hard and difficult. But you know what? It is breakable. Only those who can bend, that are filled with true love, with true meekness, find and forgive. And this is why he prayed this prayer. It was very important. And forgive us our offenses even as we have forgiven our offenders. Remember the word debt and debtors is used as a metaphor, meaning of those offenses and offenders in the Aramaic tongue. Now, let's go to an attunement. In my book, Setting a Trap for God, I do an attunement after each phrase that sets our hearts and our minds in the proper, proper position to receive and feel. This is the sixth attunement. Let's look at it. Forgiveness revitalizes our hearts and emotions. It releases our inner tensions and bondages that may plague our minds and souls. We release others, and when we do so, we release ourselves. We live in self-compassion and self-acceptance. Knowing this vital truth, we live in contentment, not needing the approval of others for self-acceptance. This attunement would not be complete without the powerful act of forgiveness. We trap the inner powers of our souls to free others and ourselves. This is the sixth attunement. And remember what Jesus said to be pure in heart, blessed are the pure in heart? Meditating with our hearts on the power of forgiveness, we tune into the needs of others and to our own needs. Forgiveness assists us to clear and purify our minds. Forgiveness clears our hearts of hatred and resentment. In this way, we may commune with one another in joy and peace and with our heavenly beloved, our Father. Jesus said, Delighted are those who are pure in their hearts for they shall see God. Yes, we live in delight perceiving God's presence when our hearts and minds are clear. And what clears it is forgiveness. Pure in heart is an Aramaic expression that means a sincere person who has a clear conscience. There is something more to consider about the practice of forgiveness. Jesus does teach us through the line of this prayer that our forgiveness comes by forgiving others. As we forgive others, we learn to forgive ourselves. 
People who refuse to forgive others usually won't forgive themselves either. Then sometimes the opposite is true. We may find it easier to forgive others than to forgive ourselves, as I said earlier. We can be very hard on ourselves, but more lenient and considerate towards others. Learning to feel compassion for ourselves is just as important as forgiving others. Self-compassion aids in practicing self-forgiveness. This is vital if we are to maintain a healthy, wholesome life. Let us realize and accept ourselves as we are. This is part of the attunement, knowing that only through the fertile ground of self-compassion can we grow and find self-acceptance. Remember the statement of Jesus, be as pure as doves, which means as innocent as doves. When we do this, we maintain forgiveness. We will not remain where there is a constant strife. You know, that's what a dove does. A dove moves away from where there is strife and trouble and will, will not go by an agitated person. A person who is very agitated or angry, the dove will flee from them. That's what it means to be pure as dove. Stay away from trouble. Find forgiveness. We will remain where there is, we will not remain where there is constant strife or where troublemakers dwell. We put love first in our lives and live in peace as much as we can. Let us avoid unnecessary conflicts and contentions whenever and wherever possible. This is the attunement of learning to forgive. In our next phrase, we're going to be dealing with materialism and one of the most, most important. I know this one on forgiveness is important, but this next one, this next phrase, when properly translated from Aramaic, gives us a clearer meaning. Because it has not been translated correctly, we have an improper impression of God in this next phrase. And we will do this next phrase in our next session. It is very important, so do not miss this next one that deals with materialism and deals with an understanding of God's nature. Does God do a certain thing the way we pray it normally? No, God does not. So what is the proper way to pray this next line in this next phrase? We must know what it is and we will do it in our next session.